What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, welcome back. Last week we suffered a crushing, crushing blow, losing our MVP and potential MVP of the league. Not going to be MVP anymore, but that is JJ Ford. Out three weeks with an abdominal tear. Also, Logan Thomas, two backup tight end, dislocated hip out five weeks, but no JJ Ford. I cannot believe that. We got Sam Howell under helm now, and JJ, he will be back by week 18, but will we still be the number one seed at that time? Will we even still be in the playoffs at that time? I mean, let's be honest. JJ Ford has been the face of this franchise, but those questions and more going to be answered here in just a few short weeks before the playoff starts. And the game we play today, huge playoff implications. Playing the 8-5 and five Green Bay Packers. We are the one seed as of now. Packers are the four seed, but they are only one game behind us. So lose this game today against the Packers. And the Packers will more than likely be the number one seed. And we could be anywhere from the two to three to four seed. We'll still be a division leader as of right now. But again, the Eagles and you see now the Giants in there as well. They are hot on our trails. So I would actually dub this a must win game today. Let's see what we're up against with these Green Bay Packers. Why are they so good? I can tell you that Jordan Love is no longer here. It is Bernie Lewis, the two-year pro out of Texas Tech, and he doesn't really look that good. I mean, he's only 71 playing up to a 71 overall, normal dev. I mean, he's having a, it's an okay season, I suppose. I mean, it's not anything, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it's not great. And he wasn't even drafted. He was a UDFA player. So he is leading this Green Bay Packers organization to a playoff push this season. Very interesting. Aaron Jones here. Uh, obviously a Viking in real life. And then uh, we got Trey Ratliff, a two-year man out of Penn State. And then uh, fullback, they got two of them, Derek Watt and Joseph Clifford. Interesting there. Wide receiver room, I'll tell you what, in real life, which is pretty similar here in Madden to what it is in real life, Green Bay Packers' young wide receiving room looks great. Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, and Dontavian Wicks all on this team in real life. And then they also got Cedric Wilson Jr. as well. Damon Highsmith, a two-year pro out of Oklahoma. He looks a very, very good as well. Was he a number one overall draft pick? I want to say he was. He was. Yeah, he was the first round pick 27 in the 2024 draft. So got to watch out for him. And, of course, Musgrave and Tucker Craft there as they are in real life. David Bakhtiari here, not going to be here in real life. <laughs> Definitely not. Aww. Elton Jenkins, good offensive line. Jonathan Argon. Okay, rookie Notre Dame, really good center. John Runyon, good guard. So their offensive line is good. Definitely going to be uh, holding some protection there for Bernie Lewis. And then on the defensive side, they got Dwayne Garrison, a two-year pro out of Louisville. Looks good himself. We got Samson Ebicon uh, on the right side. Okay, and big Kenny Clark, great nose tackle to go along with uh, Cameron Harris. No D'Angelo not their rookie. He's hurt. Sean Gary, good pass rusher. Quay Walker, great middle linebacker. Good, I would say. Good to great teetering. Malik Re Malik Reed, okay. Uh, right out, nothing crazy. Jair, can't believe he's 99. I like him, but I don't think he's 99 worthy. Eric Stokes. And then uh, Siante Monk, a rookie, looks pretty good. So their secondary could be causing us some problems today. Kirby Joseph, good free safety. And then Darnell Savage, the, uh, the vet. Always like to see him out there in real life. Eddie Pinheiro, good kicker. And their punter, Jack Fox. So... I mean, I would say the quarterback is probably their one weak spot, but aside from that, this roster looks pretty good. And with only one active quarterback right now, I decided to bring in the Pastronaut. That is right, to back up Sam Howell. I mean, he's Josh Dobbs, so like, you hope you don't have to use him, and I feel like if he is on the field, it's not going to be a good thing, but if Sam Howell were to go down, we would have our kicker, Joey Sly, behind him. I mean, he's at least agile, can do some play action, not very good throw power, and unless you're throwing it short, not very good. But again, he's just here as an absolute last resort. Now, good news, Terry is back. That should help out a lot. And then also our left tackle rookie out of USC, Jarius Powell. He is back as well. So aside from J.J. Ford and Logan Thomas, we are healthy. Defense is healthy. Looking good, as always. I don't really see too many true weaknesses in here. You know, could get a... 
I would say right end, but James Smith Williams leads our team in sacks. I mean, come on. Glenn May, okay, could get better on D tackle, but he's young. Tony Knight, I would say probably upgrading that middle linebacker spot is our biggest area of focus. But aside from the MVP himself, we are healthy and we are at home. So if you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for weekly Madden 24 content. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. If you guys love Madden and you love watching Madden franchise content, freaking subscribe. This is the channel for you. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to St. Louis Sentinels field and get ready for the game. Packers going to get the ball first here, so we are going to see what this two-year pro Bernie Lewis out of Texas Tech is all about, but not before we see a kick return. That will go nowhere from the Packers, and we looked at him pre-game. He didn't look very good, but you know what? You could talk about all the stats in the world. Biggest stat is the record, and right now the Packers, again, if they beat us today, guys, if they beat us today, it could be the number one seed in the NFC playoffs, so... A lot at stake for both teams here. Obviously, we don't want to drop down in the playoffs because we got uh, our NFC East foes right on our heels. And I feel like we're going to have to play a big game against this man, Aaron Jones. And Jonathan Allen in the backfield there to drop him for three. He may just be their offense, you know. And he was a big part of the Packers offense, obviously, in real life, now with the Vikings. So we'll see what uh, he decides to do there. But here in Madden, going to probably always be putting a body on him here. Tony Knight, got to watch him, and Chase Young. So our defensive line not uh, giving Aaron Jones any lanes here. As just like that, we bring up a big third and 12. And how key would it be with an offense that uh, has, <laughs> we'll say question marks, so we'll call it. A lot of question marks on the field. Tried to air it out there for Watson. And David Bakhtiari doing what David Bakhtiari does best. Besides blocking, that would be getting injured. But as I was saying, with an offense that has got a lot of question marks, or at least one, we have one question mark right now. That is Sam Howell, number 14. But a three and out for the Packers, a beautiful way to start this game. And Jahan Dotson going to get upended right away. So Sam Howell last week lit it up in the yards, but did throw two costly interceptions. And that is not something that we have grown accustomed to really seeing with J.J. Ford under center. He has only thrown seven, I believe, seven or eight uh, so far in this whole season. So Sam Howell came in and chucked two of those. But we do got our big number one wide receiver back. Let's see if that plays a big impact. I think it's gonna. The St. Louis save. Just seeing him on the field. Just seeing him on the field. That really does truly make all the difference. Now, Sam Howell, I want to kind of ease him into this game a little bit. So let's just start out something easy. Screen pass to Dudley. Don't want to ask Sam to do too much. And Dudley, with his 93-94 speed, is able to get this to the 24-yard line of the Packers. So we are starting out beautifully in this one, which is exactly what I want to see. This is supposed to be the year of destiny for the Sentinels. And I am not going to let some crazy injury ruin that. Dudley got it. He has got to play a good game today. Dudley has got to play a good game today. He needs to. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put the ball in his hands. I'm going to put the ball in his hands. Give him no excuses not to perform. And uh, if he can have a big game today, you know, take some of that pressure off of uh, Sam Howell. Man, would that be all the difference. Let's run away from the blockers here. Dudley's got a little bit of room. Was trying to get a uh, block set there by Damian Lewis. He did not quite get it. But Dudley still does pick up the first down nonetheless. See what running back number two, Dwight Jackson, can do. Oh, God, it's Quay Walker, but Dwight breaks him. Okay. Hey, could have been a lot worse. I mean, that was a, that was a hard fought one yard. About the hardest fought <laughs> one yard that you're going to see in the NFL. That much is for sure. And Dwight has shown some flashes of, we'll say goodness. I don't want to say greatness necessarily, but he's shown some flashes of goodness. Let's try a little play action rollout with how, and let's just actually give it to Jackson. Can he power through? He kind of does getting this to the four yard line and you know, field goals. I do not think are going to win this game. And uh coach is saying, do I want to go slants or spacing? We'll go spacing. Going to have to look for a quick, probably Bart Burns or McLaurin. 
Thinking it may be McLaurin if I see a blitz on that side. Nope, it is just going to nearly be intercepted. Wow, that was Darren Windsor, the rookie out of Syracuse. And I guess we, as much as I don't want to, that was a missed opportunity there, man, for sure. Got to take points, though, you know, cannot leave points on the board, especially this early on. So three points is not what I wanted, but points on the board is points on the board. See what Bernie Lewis does here on this drive. He only threw one pass last drive, and it was an overthrow. So small sample size of Lewis, and this time it's Jones. Oh, that could be dangerous. Wow. Jones always elusive and always shifty. I, as a Packers fan, which, I mean, you guys can see, Pack, I you cut my arm open. I will have green and yellow blood. I know. It's disgusting. I have to go see a doctor about it. It's a whole big thing. But I don't. I was sad to see him go, but and especially to the Vikings. Like, I mean, come on. Of all the teams to go to, we're still going to get to see him two times per year. He was a Packer through and through, but uh, yeah, can't argue with the idea of bringing in Josh Jacobs, I guess. I'm going to use her up on Cam Curls. Probably going to be a Jones run, which it is. And Jones is able to find the first down. So this has really been... Aside from that one pass, pretty much Aaron Jones the entire game. Okay, so now Bernie Lewis comes out in a probably a passing situation. One would think it's a check down to Christian Watson and a good one at that as he does pick up eight yards and gets this to uh, St. Louis Sentinel's 40-yard line. We're going to press up here. It is zone coverage. Um, Aaron Jones, wow, he looks tired back there too. It's going to be, oh, a nice play fake, and that's going to be another open receiver. It's Jaden Reed. So Bernie Lewis starting to show off that arm now. Two straight completions. We may have to, uh, he's been going outside pretty much on all of his passes. So we may have to uh, do some outside shade here just to get a little bit of extra help on the boundaries. We'll see if he goes to, this is probably going to be Jones. It is. Jones looking tired, but not on this play. Jones is a workhorse, 7 for 38. And guess what? Now the Packers are into the red zone. Tell you what, man, we are going to need some sacks and some pressure. It's coming, Bro. but it's also a wide open receiver there. That's Cedric Wilson, the veteran out of Boise State. Surprised he didn't score. He got it all the way down to the one. And this is why I said I did not want to settle for field goals. I did not want to settle for field goals. We're going to go man here. Going to put extra eyes on Aaron Jones, which it's not going to be, but it's good. Defense there by Justin Hayward. He was going for Jaden Reed, and Justin was right there in good position. And I guess we just go man again. It seemed like it worked on the last play, and oh my god, Watson bobbled it and then caught his own bobble. <laughs> Did you see that? That was nuts. Okay, well, Christian Watson gets into the end zone, and the Packers' second drive leaps and bounds better than their first. I'm telling you, man, with the MVP being gone, we, we got to find a way to, to get touchdowns. Field goals ain't going to get it done. I mean, it's cool. You know, all the cool kids are doing it, kicking field goals and whatnot. No, we need old school smash mouth football. Got to put the ball into the end zone. Let's bring it out with Jahan Dotson. Yeah, that's always a great idea. Psych. Going to start this drive from the 22. There's the NFC playoff picture, man. Look at all those eight and five teams. And then even the Eagles and the Giants at seven and six as well. So no rest for the wicked. We got to get out here and make some things happen. Got to leave it all out on the field today. Terry single coverage, but not getting pressed. So I'm not going to entertain the idea of audibling it. We're going to see if we can get some good blocks for Saxton, which we actually do. Saxton, good to see him running well. It's been a minute. Hopefully he can keep that going for the remainder of this game. I'm going to try to alternate him and Jackson a little bit. Maybe it's the amount of reps you know, that I've been given Dudley, which I have been feeding. I think he leads the, t leads the league in rushing attempts. So we're going to try to get Dwight Jackson out here a little bit more. Does a good job picking up the first down there. Trying to put Sam Howell in good positions to succeed. Here, but we got pressure and Dudley could not press R1. Couldn't press R1, man. Dudley was wrapped up in a block. That one is killer. But we do know what coach is wanting me to call which is a good play. Uh, it's typically what the coach does suggest to call in these situations. So let's see if maybe Terry or somebody can get, I think it is Terry. I think it is Terry. Terry holds on. Oh my God. I am so happy to have him back. So happy to have him back. The three or four weeks that he was gone, I was depressed. I was in my room. The lights were off. 
The fingernails were plain and painted black, and the My Chemical Romance was in the Walkman from the 90s. You better believe it. But he's back now, so now it's Pharrell happy. Everything's honky-dory. He made a big, big play there. Draw play to Dudley seems like a good idea. Show me some blockers. We got him. Dudley having his best game in quite a while. Him and Aaron Jones going step for step, tick for tack. Dudley picking up a great first down. All right, baby. Coach is calling it TE attack. I like this. This is a this is a part of the field where we're sometimes able to roll out and hit Bart Burns. So let's see if we can hopefully seal the edge over there. Give Sam Howe a little bit of time to roll out and hopefully find a target. Uh, starting out good. Bart is open. Bart catches it. Easy touchdown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sentinel's gonna go back on top. Bart gonna do a little dance. It was a pretty good, uh, pretty good pass from Sam Howe. Definitely one thing I will notice with Sam, we gotta set our feet if we roll out. Um, Cause even with setting the feet, that one, I thought it was gonna be a little bit of an overthrow. So cannot be doing any sort of throw on the runs with Sam. Feet are gonna be planted squarely on the turf for each and every pass. So Bernie Lewis showed us a little something on uh, his last drive here. He's changing the play. We're going to stay true to what we called. Got a little spy on the field here. Jamin Davis, and there's a big sack from Chase Young. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been uh, watching quarterbacks carve us up these last couple of weeks. Jalen Hurts did it last week, and forget who did it the week prior. Somebody did. So nice to see, uh, and someone other than James Smith-Williams, too. Nice to see someone other than James Smith-Williams get in there and generate some pressure. So let's see what Lewis does on this one. It's a check down to Jones, and what an open field tackle by Chase Young. He's all over the field. That was Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was not able to fake out Chase Young. That is awesome and amazing. And now we can just guess pass and I'll probably shade outside and have an extra defender here, Trovon Wiley drop back and it's just going to be a little screen pass to Jones and that is not going to get it done so good defensive drive by the Sentinels Jamin Davis Chase Young and the boys they came up kluch on that one starting this drive from the 41 I think more outside runs seems like a good idea look at Terry fighting for that block man look he comes back and he is just doing everything blocking running routes catching contested balls like I said I want to kind of rotate these running backs a little bit I don't want Dudley doing all the work I want to keep him fresh and uh li not limit the reps but kind of split them probably still in favor of Dudley a little bit but there's a nice little hole for Jackson and he's running well too picking up nine yard lines picking up nine nine oh. yard lines no 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 he didn't pick up nine yard lines he picked up I mean I guess kind of right nine yard, yeah a one, one yard line look all right, let me go ahead and stop. Single back wham, Dwight Jackson. Run it up the middle. Ooh, stopped there by multiple Packers. Thought the wham would get the job done. It did not. And third and two upcoming. And one would think this would probably be a run play, but I don't actually like the run. So we're going to come out pass and someone please. Oh, God. That, that's what you get when you got. That's going to be a pick six, isn't it? You have got. To be kidding me man you have got to be kidding me that's chuck clark the backup safety andrew wiley goes down that is that is the jj ford effect right there because that okay it wasn't the most open but george williams i mean typically we can fit this thing underneath and sam i mean look i didn't even lead him or nothing sam just completely missed him and if you guys watch these St. Louis games, these are the things that you don't get with J.J. Ford. These are the things that you don't see with J.J. Ford. But we don't got J.J. Ford. Oh, no. No, no, no. We do not. It's going to be running into the kicker. I don't care. Now, the one thing we can't do is panic and start trying to play hero ball. So, still a lot of football left to go. And let's just go ahead and give it to our tight end, Cole Turner. Why not? Only picking up two, so nothing crazy. But we don't want to get into a spot where, you know, we're trying to play hero ball and panicking and doing this and doing that. There's still tons of time in this one. So, you know, we just really, for the most part, again, got to put Sam Howe in good, good positions. I kind of like, uh, should I streak Dudley? Is that a thing? Let's do it. See if those linebackers blitz down. They are not gonna, but Bart Burns is open enough. Oh, my God. 
Thought he was open enough, and he got bounced around like a freaking pinball out there. Third and six now, upcoming. Need some protection if this one's going to work here. It's going to be a play fake, so I need some blocks to hold. Jahan, open enough, and let's just go out of bounds. Remember last game, he needed 150 yards to get his little breakout thing. He didn't get it, but he did get, I think, like 120 or something like that. He played a really good game. And he got a lot more reps, of course, due to the absence of Terry, who's back now. But John still played great, and that was uh, definitely good to see. That could be picked also. Man, oh, man, dude. Darnell Savage, Chuck Clark, Kirby Joseph, those guys making Sam Howe's life a living hell back there. And this is a key third down three. This might actually be four down territory as much as uh, I hate to say. I need JJ Ford back, man. No, it's probably not the right call here, but I just, I don't, I feel like we can't punt it. I feel like we cannot punt it, and I just think that we need to pick this up. And there's Curtis. Oh, my God. Way to hang on to it. He got injured, but your sacrifice was not in vain, brother, because if we go on to score, you're going to be the MVP of this drive. I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of, I know, I'm doing a lot of pre-snap stuff here, uh, but just stay with me because I think... If Kirby Joseph comes down, which he is, and this should be McLaurin. It was McLaurin. He won on press. But we are starting to feel the Sam Howell effect here, ladies and gentlemen. Curtis Samuel will come back, so at least that is good. Got to do it. PA cross, single back, X bunch, nasty. It is time. It is time. And Curtis Samuel already back, too. Nice. So hopefully this can work again. Going to need some protection, and we don't got it because Rashawn Gary is right there. Yeah, okay, okay. I see how it's going to be today. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell that the accuracy is not there with Sam Howe, and uh, it is quite depressing. Terry, can you... By his grace, by his grace. You bail us out again. Oh, my God, he does. I love it. Terry, I heart you. I heart you so much. You're my BFF forever, man. You're like a PS1 memory card because you, sir, are saving our game for sure. And got to go ahead and ID up Quay Walker here. This should be the last play before the two-minute warning. Lots of riffraff in there. Dudley doing a good job just to even fight forward for two. And I'll tell you what, the coach says slip screen here. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Got to watch how many screens I call, though, because the adaptive AI here might start to clue in on that. But I feel like this is a good time to call it. So uh, give me a couple blockers. Dudley could have it. Come on, Dudley. Fight forward. It's all right. You know, that's actually probably best case scenario. Well, OK, I would have taken the score. But we get the ball after halftime. So I want to shave some of this clock off as much as humanly possible. Why I stick to Terry? JJ's usually accurate on these. Can Sam Howe be? He wasn't. He wasn't. But Terry had to die for it. And Terry McLaurin, welcome back, brother. You were sorely missed. The St. Louis Savior on full display today. Yeah, I mean, that... <laughs> oh, man. Maybe the Pastronaut might have to be warming up there on the sidelines. I know Sam Howe's fired up, and I know he threw... You know, ton of yards last game, but I'm telling you, especially with me playing with him here, I'm feeling the effects of that accuracy. But nonetheless, we do take the lead, but 51 seconds on the clock, still a world of time. And the Packers got all three timeouts, so they're going to be in their quick little two-minute drill. So got to lock in and play some good defense. Now, I think zone coverage is the good thing here. We're going to obviously go ahead and guess pass, but... Uh, can't be just relying on blitz and press, man. Yeah, it's good when it works, but these little checkdowns from Jones may just be enough too, but we do keep him in bounds, which is good. And we'll see if Bernie Lewis, okay, they're going to call a timeout. They're on the 38 and only one more timeout remaining. We're going to press up with the guys again. It's zone coverage this time. Jonathan Allen getting in there and Christian Watson. That was close. Bernie Lewis is eight for 10, but only 60 yards because uh, it really has been you know, more or less been the, the Aaron Jones show today, I would say. And do we do the same thing? Press man with a blitz? It's kind of dangerous. It's definitely dangerous. I need Justin Hayward to be out here playing some extra coverage. But I just feel like he's going to carve us up in zone. Packers call a timeout. I mean, we'll see where they go. If they if this is, a, you know, 
not out of bounds, something in the middle of the field. I don't ever see the CPU spike. That's the thing. I never see the CPU spike. How did he catch that? He did stay in bounds, though, so they got to hurry up. They got no timeouts. I don't know. They're going to try to send out their field goal unit here quickly. I don't know if he gets this off, and it might be too long anyways. He will get it off. See if it's got the leg, though. It just might. Wow. <laughs> okay, so 17. That was that was exciting. That was a little, uh, if that was me, man, I'd have the nervous toots going on over here. I'd have the sweaty palms. But 17-7 going into the locker room. We're playing good enough. Defense uh, could step it up a notch. And we do get the ball back, so that is good. Now, as far as my focus is here, my foci, if you will, I made a blitz counter. And um, I kind of liked, uh, that did kind of mess up the, no, we're going to go blitz counter. I did like the way that it worked. And I think I went defend deep pass. I like the way that worked as well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's get in here and hopefully have a good, good second half. Kick this thing off with a run to Dudley. He played good in the first half. Cut back lane there a little bit. I'll take a gain of five. Not the flashiest, not the sexiest play. But again, just like I mentioned in the first half, don't need to necessarily play, you know, like hero ball or anything like that. We just got to have good methodical drives. And uh, this could be possibly uh, George Williams on the RPO, maybe. We'll see what that corner does. He is playing off of him, so we're going to go to George. George got a big body, and there we go. Nice to see that big old six foot nine frame fall forward for a Sentinels first down. Terry not getting pressed. I wish that he was. Maybe he gets open on the curl route, but we'll just give it to Williams again. And I'm telling you, man. That pass was behind Williams, too. He had to adjust to it. So I'm, I'm not really... Yeah, the, I'm sure the yardage will be there at the end of the day for Sam Howell because it's Madden. Like, you can get 250, 300 yards with a 60 overall quarterback. But I'm just not liking the accuracy that I'm seeing. I am liking George Williams, though. Three straight catches on this drive. This man cannot be contained. Go ahead and flex on the crowd here, George. We're loving the work that you're putting in, brother. Getting this thing to the 34. So we'll go QB draw. I like it. We'll continue to uh, to feed him the rock. May cut this thing up to the left too, depending on what I see here from the line. That could be the move. Dudley wasn't quite able to get the first down, but does get very, very close. Uh, every core in my body wants to audible this to McLaurin because he is getting pressed. I know it's only one yard. And you're probably thinking, like, what are you doing, dude? But I'm just telling you, I got a good feeling about it, and that's why. Terry freaking McLaurin. That is all that needs to be said. Terry freaking McLaurin. He comes back after being on the sidelines, watching the games from the couch, kicked up in his lazy boy. He comes back and has, I mean, I don't know, man. This is one of his bigger games of the season. I know he has some... Games where he went like crazy, over 200 yards. Shoot, he might have over 200 in this one. We'll have to check the stats as we always do. But how about coming out of the locker room, engineering a touchdown drive, exactly what the Sentinels needed. We're going to go press dime coverage again. And if Aaron Jones is the target here, which he will not be, where is Lewis going to go? He's rolling out and going to get sacked by Jamin freaking Davis. Awesome. Oh, ooh, ooh, Lewis is a little bit hurt. PJ Walker is his backup. So far, I haven't seen too much from Lewis. I don't want to, uh, you know, poke the bear too much, but I haven't really seen too much from him. And uh, hopefully with the third and 19, we've seen teams convert these crazy plays before. Jones, he actually might do it. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> my heart can't take it. Oh, well, the Packers will punt. My God, man. If they would have picked up 19 on the screen. Got to watch the fake, too. Seen teams fake it quite often. This one is going to be true. So there you, there you go. It wasn't the prettiest way to stop, uh, stop an offense, but it is what it is. Ooh, big hit there on Jahan. Got to make sure he qu cradle, cradles? No, cradles that ball. Dudley averaging 7.0, 7.0 yards per carry. Gonna probably go to him again on this drive. Uh, nope, it's just Milo Eifler. Why is my linebacker in the backfield on this play, man? Just why? Milo, just, I'm not expecting much from your brother. Just please don't fumble it. 
All right, Will Devlin or somebody there pushed the pile forward. I'm telling you, my art can't take this kind of stuff. Let's uh, have Curtis come out here, and let's ID up, of course, Rashawn Gary as the mic. And let me see something on the outside. Oh, God, Gary's right there. Instant block shed. No. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. And, I mean, look, we've been going gun verticals all game on these third and long situations, and the coach continues to call it. So who am I to argue with myself? Because I am the coach here, and it's been Terry on these routes. Um, uh, not going to be Terry this time. It's just going to be a pick from Jair Alexander. So that is two straight weeks now. I probably had George Williams. He should have been the read. But that's two straight weeks that we've seen Sam Howe interceptions. Two of them. So four interceptions over the last two games. And I mean, not to, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, guys. But again, you just that's something that you don't see with, with JJ. You don't see that with JJ. And we're seeing it with Sam. Ooh, nice block shed by John Allen. But he kind of got tripped up. And Jonathan Aragon, the rookie center, I want to say, goes down to the turf. Okay, let's see what Lewis does here on second and six. We gave him a great opportunity and wide open was a receiver there. But Lewis just missed him. That was actually uh, the D Damon Highsmith guy, the tight end that I was talking about uh, earlier. And I'm going to do the same thing that's kind of been kind of been helping us on these situations here. We're going to do the good old uh, blitz and press it's been working so far up until this point. And, oh, my God, almost worked again. But Bernie Lewis overthrows Christian Watson. And we dodged a freaking bullet bill on that one because that one probably would have been six. But this is the battle of the inaccurate quarterbacks, I will say. Sam Howe and Bernie Lewis would have been more exciting if we got J.J. Ford and Jordan Love. But I don't know. This one is exciting, and that man right there, always exciting, Terry freaking McLaurin. This is the play that's been working really good lately, the HB stretch, and that time Terry left his man. That time Terry left his block. I don't know what that was all about. He's supposed to be blocking the outside receiver there, and uh, I don't know where the heck he was going, but not where I wanted him to go. I can tell you that much. Let's do a little curls concept here. Terry, uh, I need Jahan Dotson to to drag away from Terry because um, I feel like Terry can definitely get this curl route. Well, he would have been able to if Sam Howe could throw an accurate ball. Again, need some protection because we're coming out in the shotgun, but it is going to be a play fake, so I need these blocks to hold. God, man. Jair almost had his second of the day as well. And yeah, like I said, this is the battle of the inaccurate quarterbacks because when J.J. Ford's out there and he's got that good old Dots X-Factor activated, all you see is Dots on the field. Right now, we're just kind of seeing like uh, wounded ducks. Nice hit by Trovon Wiley. But we're leaving this door cracked open for the Packers and missing out on some opportunities today, folks. Come on, man, here. I'll have Tony Knight kind of... I'll watch Jones and the tight end and just kind of see where I think Lewis is going to go. And of course... I played the run, and he went past. He actually had a tight end out there wide open on the flat, but he didn't see him. And that will should bring it to the end of the third, and it will. So in for a wild finish, it would appear. And Packers are driving. We are dominating on yards, but just throwing inaccurate balls, throwing turnovers. It's kind of what you'd expect with Sam Howell. But I got to buckle up and figure it out and continue to get that man McLaurin involved because he has been – on a tear this game, but will it be enough? That is the question. Lewis is going to come out single back here, so see if Justin Hayward can get in the backfield. He's not going to be able to stop there by Quan Martin, but gain a six. So nice run by Jones. See if Lewis goes past a run here. I could see it going either way. If it's a run, we may be screwed up the middle, and it is a run, and we are screwed up the middle. Saw that one from a mile away. Jones now 13 for 66. So him and Dudley looking like they were going to be uh, due for 100-yard games. And they've both kind of cooled down a bit here. So I think the, maybe the first running back to really put it together may be the one. Oh, nice defense there by Benjamin St. Juice, of all people. Getting in the face of the receiver and causing the breakup. Second and 10, balls on the 39. Lewis coming out shotgun as he has been for quite a while now and that was Tony Hoover 
and a shot on the ball. Christian Watson does haul it in, but for no gain, they say. And this is an interesting one. I am going to go back to my little press blitz here. This is an interesting one because if the Packers don't get this, which it's, it'll be tough, if they don't get this, they're kind of in no man's land, oh, and Bernie Lewis goes down. So that is going to bring in the veteran out of Temple, P.J. Walker. But I would presume the Packers would punt, and they're going to go for a long field goal. They do got Eddie Pinheiro, so this would be about a 55-yarder. Uh, he actually should be able to drill this, I would think, and just barely he does get it through. But that does put the pressure on us just a little bit more to score. If we go down here and score, I'm confident in this one. Uh, but if not, I don't know, man. I don't know. Get the Vaseline and the ibuprofen and the Ben Gay ready and whatever else you need to heal because we might need some healing prayers to go up if we don't find the end zone or at least a field goal on this one. We're going to start out mesh, but Terry is getting pressed. So I just need I just need to see Kirby Joseph. That's a bad pass. He tricked me. He baited me. Some would even say that Kirby is the master when it comes to baiting because he did drop down there. He did. But then he like, see, he knows. He knows what I'm going to do. And with Terry getting pressed again, receiver does have the inside shade. Not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go that time. There's Bart Burns, middle of the field clutch catch. Thank you, Bart. Getting this thing almost to midfield. Keeping this drive going for the sets. Need a good pull here from, uh, I think that's Ricky Stromberg. Let's see if we get it. It's good enough. Dudley coming back. Still going. Still going. Shaking everybody aside. Dudley Saxon only about 5'9", but looked like he was 6'3", 250 on that one. And he is nearing closer to the century mark. And they just changed their strip ball to aggressive. So that's a little scary. Don't like to see that. Let's go ahead and... Play action, roll out here. Maybe we can hit Terry again. He's there. Terry's still going. Rashawn Gary gets injured too. I will certainly take it. And how about Terry continuing his dominance in this one? We got the ball on the seven, primed for scoring position. See if we can get Dudley on the outside, running away from blockers. He might have it with his speed, and he does. Thank you, Dudley. Thank you very much good to see him having a good game i hope that he gets over 100 yards but even if not he has played great and that's gonna make it uh, hopefully if i can make this an 11 point game and the packers may not have their starter bernie lewis i'm gonna have to score twice with pj walker i don't know i'm a pseudo browns fan i live here in ohio and i watched pj walker a lot last season if anybody knows about the browns situation you know, uh, Deshaun Watson went down, DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson went down. So PJ Walker was out there good handful of times. Didn't look great, but looked OK. And it looks like it will be the PJ Walker show probably throughout. We got our dime defense out here. So let's see if that even makes a difference. He may be handing this ball off. He is actually not. It's going to be a check down to Jones. Big hit from Hoover. Only picking up three and the Sentinels. We got no takeaways today. Could really, really use one here. A takeaway would all but seal this game for us. And also, time is not on the side of uh, the Packers. I was trying to put Hoover in man coverage. It did not work. And that's a nice pass. And staying inbounds is the tight end, Damon Highsmith, getting this ball into Sentinels territory. We're going to go back to press blitz because I'll tell you what, it's been working. And P.J. Walker, not the... Uh, the most reps in the world. So he see how he handles that. He checks it out to Damon Highsmith for only a gain of one. All right, Sentinels, time to buckle in here and hopefully play some good defense. We're trying to get to Walker. That was an inaccurate ball. Looking for Highsmith again. And this is a huge, huge third down for them. I'm not going to press blitz on this one. I'm going to come out and just play true nickel here. Coverage, uh, pressing, you know, again, I like it. It's a good idea. But eventually, like, the defense does kind of clue in on what you're doing. P.J. can run. Needs somebody to step up. Wow, Jamin Davis drove him into the turf. Obvious four down territory, though, for the Packers. So they are going to come out. Now this time, do I go? I think I do go press blitz this time because it's probably going to be a run. But I can see it being a pass, too. So Quan Martin needs you to come over to 
This side of the field, it's a run, and we had a chance on Jones and Fuller. Oh, they're going to say he got it. Really? I thought he was stopped short. Oh, it is. Oh, it was. Okay. Silly me. Yeah, it's first down because it's first down Sentinels. Of course. Yes. Ball carrier is going to conservative. And this is our game to lose, ladies and gentlemen. Four and a half to go here. Just got to really just play father time. That's that's the main thing. George Williams on these RPOs. He's been money. And look at him drive that pile forward. We love to freaking see it. Dudley on the inside. Give me two yards, please. He's got two and more. Dudley over 100 yards. Thank you so much. Best game we've seen for him in weeks as he has a great yards per carry average as well. And let's go ahead and, again, keep the reps fresh. I don't care that this game's almost over. Keep them fresh here and bring in Dwight Jackson, who has played well in limited action, cutting the ball upfield, only picking up two, but that's all right because, again, he's trying to kill as much of this clock as possible. Dwight again out of the shotgun. Show me something. All right. Six for 18, no worries. Third and seven, and we're going to let this thing tick down as close as possible to the two-minute warning. And they're saying draw from Dudley, and I concur. Come on, Dudley. Bring us home, Dudley. Bring us home, Dudley. Thank you. Dudley Saxton is back. 16 rushes, 115 yards, and a big, big touchdown. And more importantly, assuming that we go on to win this thing, he and Terry McLaurin, have really paved the way for us this entire game. So stars emerging when, st when a big star is sidelined on the field. Great teamwork, and you love to see it from the boys. And we will go on to win this thing. We kicked a field goal, and then the Packers tried to, you know, just do some uh, deep shot bombs and stuff like that. And believe it or not, Emmanuel Forbes actually got a pick in garbage time. I wasn't commentating, so I'm sure it'll be cut out. But just a little cherry on top of the Sunday that was filled with Dudley Saxton runs and Terry McLaurin catches. And most importantly, we do not let the Packers jump us in the seating. So Sam Howe, I mean, look, I said it earlier. The yardage will be there. 323. But, and even 69, which is great, amazing completion percentage. Yes, it looks good on paper, but this is Madden. And he missed a lot of throws, had two picks. Bernie Lewis, don't know what he just never got it going. P.J. Walker didn't do any better. But how is about this one? Dudley Saxton, 20 carries, a buck 38 on the ground, averaging nearly seven yards per carry and a touchdown. Aaron Jones started off looking good, but cooled way down after that. McLaurin, eight receptions, 138 and two touchdowns. Awesome as always. George Williams played good and uh, Bart Burns had a couple key catches. Curtis Samuel got hurt, came back, and we never really saw him again too much. And uh, as far as sacks, Jamin got one. Chase Young got one, so that was nice. TFLs, we had Chase Young with two. Jamin, also John Allen. And then, of course, as I mentioned, that pick from Emmanuel Forbes. So, wow, that was a good game. I mean, again, I would say that was probably a must win because had we lost that game, Packers take over the number one seed. We fall to two, three, or four. We're playing come from behind ball in terms of seeding with our backup quarterback. It's just not a good time. So that was absolutely a game that we needed to win. And we get an upgrade to Trovon Wiley, who uh, you guys don't see him too much. He's a speed rush, speed rusher. He's a rookie out of Georgia Tech. He don't make the too many sets or doesn't see the field too much, but could be something there developmental. And uh, he does get a couple of uh, plus moves to speed rushing which is nice. And then Jarius Powell going to continue to go agile for him because I want him to be a true, true run blocker to get Dudley those big games like we saw today. So that was a doozy. We go to 10 and four and then we got the Raiders next and the Cowboys. Cowboys are not in the playoff picture and Raiders are the sixth seed in the AFC side of the of the standings, whatever. Don't know what I'm trying to say. The Raiders are in the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. So they're going to have something to play for. So going to be another tough game. Still going to have, uh, what's his name now? I already forgot. I'm trying to forget. Sam Howell under Helm, not J.J. Ford. But that just made, that gave us a lot more of a cushion. And I feel a lot more confident going into these latter weeks of the season. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, 
Peace.